Hey guys, in this video, we're going to get Ionic 4 building for iOS, Android, and web. If you're on Windows, um, stay tuned for a different video. We're going to do a separate video just for you guys, but this is for Mac right now. Oh, also guys, please forgive some of the frame rate drops in the rest of this video. I'm doing the installation on my old MacBook Air, which is really pretty slow, so it has kind of a heart attack doing all these different tasks like recording and installation and so forth. The audio is just fine, but bear with the frame rate issues on the video side. For this video, I've just made a little demo project where there's a single button, and when the user clicks the button, it opens a website, my homepage, jamiebot.com. If you're completely new to Ionic, I recommend checking out my guide on getting started and installing Ionic. Otherwise, we're going to press ahead and go straight into installing this app on iOS, Android, and web. Okay, first we're going to be getting things working for iOS, so let's install some things to get started. I need to install Xcode from the App Store, so I'm just going to install that and then come back when it's done. Okay, so once you have Xcode installed, make sure that you have the command line tools installed as well, um, and specifically the way you do that is you just go over to the terminal and then type Xcode select dash dash install. Okay, um, but I already have those installed, so I'm not going to run that. Um, however, mine are out of date, so I'm going to go and update those. Try and make sure your system is as up-to-date as possible. So I'm just going to update my own um, command line tools, like so. Okay, so now that Xcode is installed, um, I'm just going to go back over here, and I'm going to run Ionic Cordova Platform Add iOS. Okay, and this is going to add iOS to our list of platforms. Dang it, guys, I just broke my screen. Check that out. I was drinking my water and I accidentally, like, it slipped and I accidentally, like, s slammed it back down on the table to catch it. And it smashed my phone. <laughs> Doing this for you guys. Just ordered a replacement. Leave a like. <laughs> Okay, so the iOS platform has been added successfully. Now I'm going to build for iOS using Ionic Cordova build iOS. Okay, so the build command has succeeded. So I'm going to run open space dot down here to open up the folder for my project in Finder. And then I'm just going to go over to the platforms directory and then there's a folder in there called iOS. So this was added as soon as we ran Ionic Cordova Platform Add iOS. And now that the build has completed, we have a file in here called myapp.xcode workspace. So I'm going to open that up, and here in the top left I'm going to click My App, and then down here you can see it says Signing for My App requires a development team. Okay, now in order to build apps for iOS, you're going to need to register for Apple's developer program. So just go to developer.apple.com slash programs, and then click this enroll button. And then scroll down to the bottom and press start your enrollment, and follow the registration steps. I believe to be an iOS developer, Apple makes you pay like 100 bucks a year. So you can just decide if that's worth it to you. I believe you can get the build working with Ionic for your phone without doing this, but I'm not sure why you'd want to build an app if you don't plan on releasing it to the App Store, so I recommend just registering for this if you're planning on being uh, an Apple iOS developer. So here you need to add account, click add account, and then you'll need to sign in with your Apple ID. You'll need to do that, otherwise it will only let you build to a simulator. So I'm going to press run up here in the top left and try first building to the XR simulator. Uh, down here in my list of apps, I have the simulator, so that's launching right now. Okay, and here's my app, it's loaded up. I actually had to run it a second time in order for it to work. I think the first time it just glitched because my computer's overloading right now with recording and so forth, but here's the app, it's running on the simulator. It's the iPhone XS, and I'm just gonna click this button, open URL and that just opens up the Safari browser. So that's the app working in the simulator. So I'm going to close this and now try and get it working on an actual uh, iOS device. So I'm going to sign into my own account. I'm going to connect my phone via USB to my computer. 
and then I'm also going to unlock my phone. That's important. If it's not showing up for you, try unlocking your phone first and then plugging it in. And now with my device selected in this left hand menu, Jamie iPhone, I'm going to click the run button. Uh, looks like CodeSign wants to access my keychain, so I'm just going to enter my password and then um, the installation should continue. If you get an error like this saying a valid provisioning profile for this executable was not found, then just go to the help menu and search for workspace settings. And then under build system, select legacy build system and press done. At this point, hopefully your build has succeeded. Um, mine is, it is currently running on Jamie iPhone. And down here in the bottom, I'm going to pull up the logs. These logs right here are from Ionic. So be sure to check in here for any additional errors. But it looks like mine's working. Okay, so this is the app. You guys already know what it looks like. Um, I'm just going to click this button up here. My poor iPhone screen, you guys. Um, and it opens up the JamieBot website in a new tab, just like normal. So this is working on a native device. Okay, now what I just showed you is known as a development build. That's Ionic Cordova Build iOS. Um, if you want to do a production build, meaning you're wanting to publish to the App Store, then make sure you add dash dash prod to the end of it. And that'll just do the same exact thing, except for it'll optimize it, and you just want to use dash dash prod if you're ever building for production or for the App Store. Okay, that wraps it up for iOS. Let's move on to Android. Oh, and if you got this far and you're enjoying the content, be sure to leave a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And subscribe for more videos like this. Let's get on to Android. Okay, now let's install Java. Okay, so we're going to download the Java Standard Edition Development Kit. And it wants me to agree to the license. And then we're going to download the Mac OS X 64-bit version. Alright, that JDK download is finished, so I'm just going to open up the DMG and double click the uh, install package and just click through this installation guide all the way to the end, installing it, entering my password as needed. For Android, we need to download Android Studio. So I'm just going to download this for Mac. Agree to the terms and download once again. Okay, then I'm going to open up this Android Studio IDE DMG. Okay, then I'm going to drag the Android Studio app into my Applications folder. At this point, I'm going to open Android Studio so that we can set up the SDK as well as the platform tools. Android Studio wants to know if I want to import any settings. I'm not going to. It's asking me if I want to enable data sharing. I don't like doing that because it slows you down a little bit. Alright, now we're to the wizard where it's going to set up the development environment, so I'm going to click Next. Um, we're going to choose a custom install to make sure that it installs the correct things. Uh, I like the light theme. Okay, and I'm just going to let it install the most recent versions of everything and click Next. For emulator settings, I'm just going to click Next. XM wants my password. Looks like my system blocked the Intel Corporation apps, so I'm just going to go in my system preferences and allow that. Okay, looks like the installation finished. Great. Okay, now we need to configure some paths for our different variables like Java, Android, just the location of where all of our files are that we just installed. So back inside of VS Code, I'm going to run vi space tilde slash dot bash underscore profile. Okay, so this is making a new file inside of my home directory called dot bash underscore profile. And this file is used by your system in order to set up each new terminal session that you have. And so I'm going to press I to start inserting and then um, paste in that configuration. Now we are going to need to edit this. So just using the arrow keys, I'm first going to go over here to Java Home. I'm first going to verify this location to make sure that this is where my Java Home is. So I'm going to copy that and then click this plus button over here and then type ls and then paste in that path. So it looks like that is a real directory since it didn't give me an error. So it looks like that is my real Java Home path. If that's not yours, you'll need to find out what it is and put that path right here. Okay, next we're gonna set up the Android Home variable. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is the right path for us as well. ls that path. Um, looks like there's stuff there, so that's probably the right one. 
So this Gradle path is going to need to be changed. And the way we're going to do that is we're first going to install Homebrew, um, like so. So just go to brew.sh. And back in our second terminal here, um, just run that command to install Homebrew. Homebrew is a package management system, and it's just going to make our life a lot easier. I recommend just doing this because I've never been able to get Gradle to work with the version that Android Studio installed. And so we're just going to install our own version with Homebrew, and then our lives will be a lot simpler. Okay, so Gradle has been installed. Now if I run brew info Gradle, it's going to tell me that slash user slash local slash seller slash Gradle slash 5.2.1 is my install location for Gradle. So I'm going to head back over to Vim, and then using the arrow keys, I'm going to go all the way down to this second to last line right here, and replace that path with the correct path for my Gradle installation location. Okay, so I'm going to press Escape and then Shift ZZ in order to exit Vim. And then I'm going to hit this trash icon up here to close both of my terminals and then load them back up again by dragging up from the bottom. And I'm doing this because the bash profile, um, when it's changed, you need to reload the terminal in order to um, get those changes. Okay, now I'm going to run Ionic Cordova Platform Add Android. Okay, and if all went well, um, this should add Android as our platform, and we should be able to run it on an Android device. Okay, now with my Android phone unlocked, I'm going to connect it to my computer via USB. And now I'm going to run Ionic Cordova Run Android. Okay, so what the add platform command did was inside of my platforms folder, inside of my project, it added this Android folder right here. And it just set up like the configuration and so forth. But now when we run Ionic Cordova run Android, um, this is actually going to try and run it on my actual device. And it's going to do an actual build for my device as well instead of just setting up the configuration. Okay, now assuming you didn't get any other errors, um, hopefully you'll get this error which says you have not accepted the license agreements yet. So if you get that error, just run the bash space and then the path to your STK manager and then space dash dash licenses. Okay, so yours is probably in a similar location to mine if you've been following along. So mine is in home slash library slash android slash SDK slash tools slash bin slash SDK manager. And don't forget the dash dash licenses at the end. Okay, it's going to say review licenses that have not been accepted. I'm going to press Y, press enter. And I'm just going to keep pressing Y and pressing enter because I'm not going to read all this crap. And then again, run Ionic Cordova, run Android. Okay, and then on my device, I got this message saying allow debugging. And I'm just going to press always allow. And then it aired out saying that no devices were found, so I'm just going to rerun that. Okay, and finally, we have launch success down here, so let's check it out on my Android device. Alright, so here it is on my Android device. I'm just going to click this open URL button, and it's asking me down here um, if I want to open it with Chrome. I'm going to say always, and then it just opens up my website. So it is working on Android as well now. Oh, and if I want to inspect what's going on inside of my Android app as it's running, um, inside of the developer console for Chrome, I can click these dots right here and then go all the way down to remote devices. And then my device is called the Blue Advance 5.0. And then scrolling down, I can see all the pages that are open. And I'm going to click on inspect for the web view in io.ionic.starter. That's the actual app running on my phone. So you can see that I can actually inspect the console here, see if there are any errors. Um, I can even inspect individual elements and debug things. So that's super helpful. If you want to run your Android app on an emulator instead of a physical device, then from the Android Studio, click Configure, AVD Manager, Create Virtual Device, Select the device you'd like to create. Download the system image you want to use. 
Okay, so that's all installed. So I'm going to select that and press next. Here you can configure what it's named and so forth. I'm just going to press finish. So now we have our own virtual device, which is great. Okay, now I just click this play button right here and that will start opening up my emulator. Okay, and with the emulator open, I'm going to run Ionic Cordova Emulate Android. Okay, so since my device is being so slow, I'm going to add this um, load URL timeout value to my config.xml and it's just going to set the the timeout to be some huge number so that um, the app will have time to load. So added that and then I'm going to rerun this Ionic Cordova emulate Android command. Okay, here we go. Now we're in business. So the app is actually working in the emulator. Somehow it's colossally slow. I'm going to click open URL and then it tries to open it in Chrome. I'll accept and continue. By the way, this whole process has taken several decades. Okay, and there we go. I'm not going to wait for it to load my website because I don't want to die of old age while I'm making this video. Okay, so there we go. We've covered iOS and Android for both physical device and emulator. Oh, and by the way, if you want to build an APK for Android um, for production, use this command, Ionic Cordova build android space dash dash release and in a separate video we can look at um, things like signing your apk file for release to the android store as well as publishing your app to the uh, app store and then finally hosting your um, web build files to the web so that other people can view your android app as a website okay and the last thing we're going to look at is the web build so to build for web is actually pretty easy. This just works out of the box. You just run ionic build and then I recommend doing a production build so use dash dash prod and this is going to build your application into the folder um, www because that is probably what's configured in your options in your angular.json. If you want to change that build path just change this variable right here the output path and then if you want to host your website, just upload that www directory to wherever you want to host your app to. Alright guys, this video took like 8 hours to film because I had to download so many things. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, please drop a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Also, I love to hear you guys' comments. Um, let me know what's on your mind in the comments section below. Let me know what's up in your life. Let me know if you have any problems with this. Whatever you feel like, leave it in the comment sections below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.